Welcome to Our City. I'm Alonzo Jones, sitting in for Mayor Bowich, and here's what's going on this week around our city. On Wednesday, March 13th at 12 p.m., Mayor Bowich will attend the first anniversary celebration of Buenguesto Restaurant, located at 624 Elizabeth Avenue. Then later that evening at 5.30 p.m., Mayor Bowles will attend the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours Networking Event, which is located at the lobby, 821 Spring Street. On Saturday, March 16th at 9 a.m., Mayor Bowles will attend the annual St. Patrick's Day Mass, which is co-hosted by the Thornsticks and the Ancient Order of Hibernians. The Union County St. Patrick's Day Parade officials will be honored at the Mass, which will be held at St. Patrick's Church. Later that afternoon at 12 p.m., Mayor Bowles will attend the 23rd annual Union County St. Patrick's Day Parade, which is dedicated to St. Patrick's and all the saints of Ireland. The Grand Marshal for this year is Sister Percy Lee Hart. If you need more information concerning these events or any others, please contact the Public Information Office at 908-820-4124. And joining me this week for this week's segment is Councilwoman at Large, Patricia Perkins Augusti, and we're going to talk about Women's History Month. Welcome. How are you? Good, thank you. It's been a while since you've been on the show. Uh, how's life? Life is good, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting to have you here to talk about Women's History Month because you made history here in the city of Elizabeth. Yes, uh, Tell us how you did that and, and what title did you achieve to become councilwoman? I gave it away. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it was in 1992. I ran for um, council at large here in the city of Elizabeth the only African-American female um, who, who ran and was successful in terms of winning. Um, there was one or two other um, African-American women who ran previously, um, one by the name of Mary Stewart, um, but she was unsuccessful in her attempts. And um, during 1992, I became you know, a history maker um, for the African-American community, for women in the African-American community. Now, I know the norm for most people is to see things the way they are and say, oh, you can't do it, you can't make change. In your case, did anyone tell you, ah, don't waste your time, you'll never win? Well, um, all through life, um, women are told, um, especially African-American women are told that, you know, you can be a secretary, you can be that, but to move on to higher professions like lawyer, accountant, um, political office, um, that's a real slim thing for you to try. Right. But if you try, you know, good luck, that type of conversation. It's interesting to say that. I was looking at a 1954 yearbook for Batten, mm -hmm. and the majority of women that had secretary, secretary, yeah. secretary, and I was talking to some of the seniors, and they said, yeah, that's what they told us to be. Right. Um, did your guidance counselor inspire you or tell you to be more, or is that something you did on your own? Well, I was always, um, even in high school, I wanted to be um, involved serving people. Mm -hmm. So I was involved in the glee club, student government. I was class president of my class. So I always had um, a desire to want to help, you know, help make things better for the community, mm -hmm. you know, to serve. And as we talk about your achievement, mm -hmm. uh, nationwide, do you think we'll ever have a female president? I don't know. America is rough. <laughs> <laughs> um, we saw what happened to, well, there's a lot, couple of women who ran for president. Right. Um, Ms. Shirley Chisholm, and then, of course, um, Hillary Clinton. And um, I'm hoping in my lifetime I'll see a female president um, in the United States. I think we, we owe it to our society um, to be um, that equally balanced when it comes to power. Right. Um, other countries around the world, they have had female presidents, prime ministers, um, so it's time for America, you know. Right. And over the years, you've been, um, a lot of events you've provided in the month of mm -hmm. March. Over the years, what's some of the events that you've provided here in the city? Women's empowerment um, is really important to me because each woman has to realize their own strength within them and then go out and do what they want right. to do in their heart's desire. So if, they, if you can't empower yourself, then it's very difficult to empower your family, to empower your children, your loved ones. So I really believe yeah. that women need to empower one another and, and provide empowerment tools for them. So that's a real pet peeve of mine. Now, when you put that event together, I don't know if you saw the final piece or even envisioned it, mm -hmm. but I had the pleasure of sitting in on a few of them. And at the end, women were crying. 
Yes. That was a powerful thing if you could put that together. Did you know that was going to happen or just? No, I didn't. Um, I was looking to the professional side in terms of developing a woman on the professional side, but I noticed that uh, the woman needed nurturing right. on the emotional side. So in order to develop the professional side, we right. had to break down some barriers that existed. And um, it was very moving, mm -hmm. um, very strengthening. And at the end of the day, a lot of those women I see today, and they're like, you know, their lives are better. Some of them went on to be entrepreneurs. They started nonprofits. They, you know, got right. their children back. They went back to work. I mean, you saw, yeah. I see them, and they stop me. You know, have that again. You know, you're going to keep having them. Right. So it's it's very important. And unfortunately, you put yourself in a place where you can't stop now because, mm -hmm. as you said, I've seen people in passing, and they said, I got my first job thanks to that event. Right. Uh, my life is much better. Mm -hmm. And people take for granted simple things like that. And I noticed over the years you've added more and more components mm -hmm. to make it grow. Um, what's next? How do, you, how do you top that? Can you top that? Or you just leave it the way it is? No, well, there's a lot more to be done. Um, like here, like I had this book from Michelle Obama, right. Becoming. So now women are really trying to become, you know, who they are and how you evolve into a Michelle Obama, or how do you evolve into a successful woman, whether it be a homemaker or a head of a um, Fortune 500 company? How do you do that? Right. So it starts very young. And so that's the next step, starting with our younger girls to make sure um, that they have a chance to right. succeed. So that's why 14 years ago, I started a National Council of Negro Women here in the city of Elizabeth. A group of women got together. It's a national organization, mm -hmm. but it really focuses on women, um, little girls, to become successful women. So it, it's important for us to reach back, you know, to our high schoolers, right. to our grade schoolers, young ladies, and say, "Hey, you can be, you know, you can do well in STEM. You know, you can do well on a basketball court. You can, you know, tennis, whatever you want right. to do. You know, in in the field of politics, wherever you want to go, you can do it." How do you, and I know you're busy, but do you ever take time, and if so, how do you mentor to young women uh, to dream bigger? Basically, you know, I encourage them to follow their dreams. Um, I go into the school systems a lot around African American History Month. We just came off African American History Month and Women's History Month, so it all rolls right into, you know, one big right. thing of just going out there and speaking to, you know, young girls. Sometimes, you know, motivate yourself, whether it's the Girl Scouts, um, there's a Girl Scout troop here in the city of Elizabeth. They always invite me, so I speak to them. So we, those type of organizations, if, if it's um, someone's daughter, right. that's another organization who I have contact with a lot. They, they too mentor young girls. They take them out on trips. So those type of things really help you. I, I like them to see the world, you know, and, and right. at a young age, and know that they are part of a world that they can really have some great adventure. And not only that, they can be successful in it, e and even as a female. I think you stated earlier, but you've been on city council w since what year? Uh, this is my 27th year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I know one of the great initiatives that you brought to the city was the SOAR program. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, are you a dreamer? How do you come up with these things? Because that was a great initiative, and, and how does that come about? It's just, you know, I know what I like to do, and when I was small, um, my, my parents, you know, it was six of us, so we basically had like a little troop within our own little right. family, and it was four girls. Right. So we, I knew what needed, you know, to nurture, you know, children, right. because I, you know, I just looked back at my own childhood. I know the things that I needed to make me whole, to make my brothers and sisters whole, so I tried to give it to the residents. And growing up, did you have any role models or some women who kind of influenced you growing up? A lot. There was um, my um, Girl Scout troop leader, uh, Ms. Strickland, mm -hmm. and then it was Desiree Pickett, who was mm -hmm. my guidance counselor, and then it was the music teacher, um, Ms. Helen Gill, and then it was the neighbors, um, Ms. Chessie Roberts, and of course my mom and my grandmother. Um, when I started campaigning, people used to say, oh, we remember your mom. You know, my mother got married at a young age and she had six kids. Mm -hmm. And we were stepkids, meaning that she had two and then she waited for, for two years and had another two. Right. And then she waited for another two years and had another two. So it was six of us. So they would say, oh, I used to see your mom pushing all you little kids, you know, and 
down the street and we're like, oh my God, look, look at that lady with all right. those little kids. And they said they didn't realize that one of them would be leading the city. Yeah. So that's what residents used to tell me when I was campaigning. I was like, oh, okay. And then they also said that my mom started out to be a nurse. Hmm. So they saw her going back and forth to the hospital, you right. know, in her nurse's uniform. So that encouraged some other women in the community to become nurses. So those little examples right. tell me that you lead by example, that people are watching, they see you, and they follow some of the good that you're doing. As we talked about the SOAR program earlier on, mm -hmm. I know you've been on the council for 27 years, as you mentioned. Very quickly, just one or two other initiatives mm -hmm. that pop up in your mind that you remember and you're proud of. Okay, the SOAR program is definitely one. Of course, the um, legislation and the building of Jersey Gardens Mall, the Retail Skills Center. And stop right there, the Retail okay. Skills Center. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Explain that to some of the residents don't know what that is. Well, the Retail Skills Center was um, an idea that I talked to the mayor about. I was like, look, mayor, we're building this brand new mall. Now we need to train our residents. So we worked with the mall developers at that time and said, give us the space. And so we can come in and make sure our residents have the full training needed to be into retail and also the um, hospitality industry, which right. is the um, hotels. And that's what we did. And I noticed a lot of people uh, were able to get jobs based yes. on that. Yes. Um, the training that they received of that, the mall was able to handle the people, uh, hire the people who came out of that program firsthand. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was a thing where you got trained mm -hmm. and employment was waiting uh, for you. Right there. So that was yeah. great. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if one more, if you could think of one more. Oh my God, there's so many things that we've done um, as a city, as a collaborative, um, whether it's just giving out the book bags and the Winter Wonderland things that we do. Um, oh, the, the free turkey celebration event is not just a turkey giveaway, it's more like... Um, now, as you're talking and you think about elected officials across the country, mm -hmm. you're very thoughtful about the, the, the grassroots people, mm -hmm. those who do not have. Right. Mm -hmm. um, some people say the rich should get whatever, but you're right. someone who really cares about people. Right. How did that come about? I think, again, it goes back to my family roots. I mean, there was six of us, mom, dad, and then my grandmother would cook every Sunday. We would go down to my grandmother's house and the family would come right. and she would make two and three meats. And, you know, we just have a family type or um, atmosphere. And I right. think if you spill that over into the community and into government, I think things will run a little bit better. So sit here now, if you mm -hmm. can go back to the young Patricia back in Elizabeth High School, mm -hmm. what advice would you give yourself? Oh my God. I did that every, I was busy when I was in high school. My last th two, three years, I was, my class was the second graduating class out of Elizabeth High School, the new Elizabeth High School. So I took advantage of everything that was there. I, I, whenever I speak before young people, I say, please take advantage of your high school years. Those are the best years right. of your life. I and mean, what's some of the activities you were involved in? Again, um, I was in the glee club. I was in the debating club, um, student government. Wow. Yeah. You were active. Yeah, I was very <laughs> active. Um, I did dance, dance for five years. I played the silver flute, so I was, yeah. I okay. Was very so well, we, well rounded. Yeah. Before we wrap, is there anything else you'd like to add, or? During Women's History Month, for all the female viewers, um, live out your dreams, mm. please. Um, you know, just live out your dreams. Yes, sometimes you may be the only woman walking into that room. Um, I do it almost every day, every other day. You know, when my right. council meet, currently I'm the only female for the last 12 years. Right. Um, sometimes, you know, you may feel like you're alone, but you're not alone. You're standing on the shoulders of so many other women, um, you know, who've gone before you. And, I, and that's what keeps me going, because I think about all the other women mm. who, you know, way before me, whether it's Fannie Lou Hamer or my grandmother, you know, or my mom or my aunts, you know, I think about them. I'm like, hey, I can do this because right. they did it. And so that makes my life much more easier. Well, on behalf of the women, I'll say thank you. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you get the thank yous and the, and the gratitude mm -hmm. because I sat in the audience at some of your events mm -hmm. and I've heard the women, the cries mm -hmm. and the, the hugs. And so keep up the good work. Thank you. And sometimes, you know, people may not be able to tell you, but mm -hmm. you appreciate it. Oh, thank you. From the book bags and all this other okay. smaller things to the larger things like the mall and a job. So That's nice. 
We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, please get the book, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I get no commission off it, but it's a great book. And even in the city of Elizabeth, our seniors, they have a book club. Right. They do a reading every yes. Monday morning from 11 to 12. So. And my father gave me that book as a gift, and mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, I thought it was for women, but it's, I no. guess they say men can read it yes, also. Yes, men can read it also. All right, I'm going to read it. We'll equal out opportunity. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with the second half of our city after these words. Thank you. Welcome back to the second half of our city. Well, I'm pleased to be joined by the Director of Public Works, John Papetti. Welcome, John. How are you? Very good. Thank you. And this is your first time on the show, am I correct? This is my first time. So just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, please. Well, uh, born and raised in Elizabeth, still reside in Elizabeth, um, happily married for over 30 years. My lovely wife, Marianne, have a wonderful son who's uh, 16 and um, been with the Public Works Department since uh, 1982 and director since about 2003. Congratulations. Good Thank one. you. And explain to us what the new tree planting initiative is. Well, um, this is our effort, the city's effort, to really put forward a program to help uh, combat uh, climate change. Mm. And um, this is the first time we've ever done anything right. like this. And, uh, you know, we want to uh, proceed uh, aggressively to get 2,500 trees planted by uh, the fall of uh, 2020. It's a lot of work. A it's lot a lot of, of work, a lot of trees. So as you mentioned this program, how is this different from other tree planting programs? All the other tree uh, programs we uh, did over the years uh, planted about 150 trees. Um, they would always go between the curb and the sidewalk. Mm. And it, they would mostly be trees that were, um, you know, known as tree trees that can right. take heat, drought, um, this is different. These type of trees, these mm -hmm. 12 trees we selected, would not fare well between the curb and the sidewalk. Okay. So as you mentioned, there's 12 different trees. Um, who is this program open to? Is it just going to be you selecting it on yourself, or how is this going to work? Uh, one family, uh, two family uh, houses, and uh, condos. And how do these trees differ from street trees? Uh, for years now, uh, many people are requesting flowering trees, uh, ornamental trees. Can't really put those trees uh, at the curb uh, like you do with the, the street trees. Uh, we were planting oaks, sycamores, little leaf lindens, uh, locust trees. They could take the heat and the salt. These trees will be planted on uh, their private property, front, side, or uh, backyards. And, um, you know, they won't, uh, you know, uh, feel the pressure of uh, being in the street or right. close to the street as the other trees do. Well, I saw your brochure on your list. There's a lot of beautiful, colorful flowering trees out there that the owners can choose from. Um, how many choices are offered? 
I think we have 12 trees, uh, four uh, flowering trees uh, that you would enjoy in the spring. We have two or three uh, trees that will have um, reddish leaves all year round. And then there's at least one maple uh, tree that the fall will be just, you know, magnificent. Planting trees for a homeowner. What's some of the benefits of having trees in our city? Well, if we're going to be serious about uh, trying to slow down uh, climate ch uh, change, this is a uh, easy way to do it. Um, by planting 2,500 trees, it's almost like adding seven acres of uh, forest in Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And those trees will put out um, 28 tons of oxygen and absorb 42 tons of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is what's the main component of uh, causing the uh, climate control. Right. And also, I think for a homeowner, you could talk about a beautification project also. Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, property value probably go up too. It certainly will. Uh, curb appeal is uh, very important for property value. So we're talking about installing 2,500 trees at someone's home. The installation process, how is that going to happen? Um, once we uh, go through the bid process mm -hmm. and we know the trees that we're going to uh, bid, um, the homeowner, a couple of weeks before uh, the delivery of trees, will receive a will receive a door hanger such as okay. this, and they're going to have a markdown by the contractor which tree they chose. We're going to ask the homeowner then to put this um, where the tree should be placed. Right. This will go, coincide with a mailing that's going to go out uh, shortly, where there will be a map in the brochure where they'll mark down where they want that tree to be placed. Right. This is like a second level, yeah. uh, just to ensure where the tree, where they want the tree to be placed will be. Do we have to worry about the roots going up? And No, not if we do this right. So we're going to ask the, uh, uh, the owners of the property, once they get their brochure, to read through the brochure, take a really good look at it, and first of all, uh, they need to know what their goals are. Right. What are they trying to uh, do with their property? Yeah. If it's for aesthetic reasons, if they're trying to shield something that might not be appealing to them, right. if they're looking for a larger tree just for shade or just to beautify it. We're going to ask them to take a look where their water and sewer lines are and their gas lines. And that's easily done. They just need to go in the basement and pretty much where the gas line, where their gas meter is, right. it usually goes directly right out to the street. Okay. The water and sewer line are usually in the same area. We don't want to plant any right. trees over those uh, utilities. Okay. You also should take a look up, see how their uh, uh, power comes in off of public service. We're not going to plant a tree underneath uh, the power lines. Other than that, if they look at the brochure right. and they look at the map, they're going to see we want to keep the trees about eight foot from property lines mm -hmm. and about eight foot from the house and six foot from sidewalks. Okay. And as we talk about installation, is there uh, any soil removal? No. All the soil will remain on the property. Um, most of these trees could be carried in. They come in like a 20-gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. They might be seven to eight foot tall, maybe inch to an inch and a quarter inch thick at right. the trunk. Um, a couple of workers will come in, dig the hole, create a ring around the hole, right. place the tree in there, kind of comb out the roots if that's the type of tree that you should uh, do that with, uh, and then uh, backfill with the soil. Is there uh, an appropriate area or somewhere appropriate that you recommend planting a tree on someone's property? Well, it's, it's up to them. I mean, it's a, a choice that they have. Um, what we have pointed out in the brochure are areas we don't want them to plant a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, if they, trees are great. I mean, you know, not only uh, what we talked about in terms of absorbing um, uh, dioxide, but uh, also, um, you know, uh, giving us oxygen, uh, they, they have a cooling effect. Mm -hmm. And if you plant a tree in a certain area and it provides us some shade to your right. house and home, it could drop the temperatures six to 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. So the choice is theirs. So two weeks from now, someone watches this and say, wow, great idea, I want it. How does a res resident sign up to get a, be a part of this initiative? Well, within a couple of weeks, uh, we'll be mailing the brochures. Uh, we're gonna request that those brochures are um, uh, sent back to us by uh, April 26th, which is Arbor Day. Okay. And um, they're on the path of getting a tree. One tree per resident. And is there a form or bid process? 
We'll take care of that, uh, that bid process. Once we uh, gather all the information and see what's, uh, what are the most popular trees are, and we put that together in the bid form, uh, we'll send that out. Uh, contracts will bid on right. it. Uh, once we um, get into contract with a contractor that we select, uh, they will be bonded and right. insured. So needless to say, I don't think December 15th will be a good day to go out and plant the trees, probably freezing cold, chance of snow. <laughs> Uh, is there a, a better time of the year to plant trees? And uh, the target time is anywhere from late September, so you could go to actually December fifteenth. Really? Yeah. So I was wrong. Yeah. You well, see, I, don't have, I don't have a green thumb, obviously. So, <laughs> so when does the planting begin, and, and tell us why it's best to do it? Well, uh, you can plant in the spring, and a lot right. of people uh, like uh, spring plant, uh, planting, especially since Arbor Day is you know in the spring. Um, but here in Elizabeth, we have more success in the right. fall. Uh, once you plant in the, the spring and then you go through the summer uh, season and you get those hot, dry days, yeah. even if the homeowner is watering the tree properly, right. uh, the loss of rate was uh, much more. So once we started in the fall, we had a better, uh, better record of uh, keeping those trees. Now you just mentioned something. In addition to normal rain, does someone have to water the trees or? Yes, uh, that's very important too. Um, there will be directions with uh, each tree. Every tree has different needs. Basically, I think on average, each tree should get watered maybe 15 gallons of water uh, each week. When the contractor plants that tree, right. he's also going to mulch that tree, um, which provides um, a great coverage. It, it reduces the uh, evaporation rate of the soil. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it also prevents landscapers and even the homeowner from running into the, uh, uh, the bark of the tree with the lawnmower or the, uh, the weed whacker. Right. Yeah, you don't want to damage the tree. So is there a goal as to how many trees you want to have planted by next year? Well, we're, we're hoping that we get 2,500 trees in by the fall wow. of uh, uh, 2020. Now, will this program be continuing in the years to come? We hope so. Uh, with uh, all the scientific information that we have uh, with the uh, 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 climate uh, uh, problems that we have, um, this is an easy solution and you have many benefits right. uh, on planting these trees. Now you said 12 different trees. Mm -hmm. Is there something that someone you might recommend for a particular yard or, or front or any tree would work anyway. Yes, when, they, when the homeowners look at uh, the brochure, uh, we kind of indicated the sizes of the trees once they reach, uh, I think it's 18 years, 25 years, and 35 years. Okay. So we're looking long-term long, long term out. If you have a large backyard, uh, we indicated that with three squares that that tree would grow to like a, approximately 35 right. feet. If you have a very small yard and if you're just looking to spruce it up or you know, improve the aesthetics to it, then you could go with a tree that's marked with one block. Mm -hmm. Go with a flowering tree, or and we have reds and we have whites with the flowering trees. Okay. Before we wrap, just tell everyone where they can call for more information. Uh, you could call 908-820-4271. Uh, uh, and also there's an email address that will be on the brochure, and that would be uh, coe dot uh, plant a tree nj.org. One more time, just in case someone's writing slow. Okay, I'll see. 908 820 4271 for the phone number, and um, the email would be coe.plantatreenj.org. And that information, again, will be in the brochure. Okay. Thank you very much. It sounds a great endeavor, and uh, I want to see you a year from now. When See how many trees you have up for us. Very good. We're excited about this. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this segment of Our City. Have a safe and wonderful week. Thank you.